at no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. And welcome to the uh, special edition of the Author Your Brand Show, where I get to bring on um, some of my favorite authors, but more importantly, my favorite human beings. And today's show is very unique because we're live streaming this, so you can ask questions if I can get the technology to work. Um, but more importantly, his book and the man behind the book is probably the most inspirational person you'll ever meet in your life. That's saying a lot because Gandhi's dead, right? So we're going to say the next best thing. This guy's actually alive. But how he is alive today can be described by many people as a miracle. Imagine being diagnosed, I don't know, five and a half years ago with brain and lung cancer, and the doctor's giving you a 1% chance of making it past year five. Matter of fact, your most likely scenario is you're going to be gone in six months. And uh, 93 chemo treatments later, look at this guy's got his hair. Um, he's had brain surgery, lungs and brains radiated, liver's covered with 15 tumors. It's like, I don't even know how he's actually walking, let alone smiling right now. So we're going to talk about his book, his attitude, his mindset, and probably some pretty raw things about life and death. So stick around and uh, welcome the show today, my friend, my mentor, the inspiration for my life for living fully every day, Mr. Les Whitney. Les. Hello. Thank you for having what? me here. An honor to have you on the show today. I'm going to take open my, my chat here and hopefully people can chime in. If they can't, too bad. We'll get it later. But um, I've got it here on the, uh, the open chat for people that want to come in and ask a question. Live stream chat. Okay, I got that going. Um, and I would love it, by the way, yeah. to ask any question they want, you yes. want or they want of me. I, I will be an open book. I am. An yes, open you book. are. We've had plenty of conversations working on your book, and we asked anything and everything about life and death and the pursuit of whatever. So um, give us about a two minute version of that, that day where you're you know, at a conference and you got the, the news. Well, I, I already had known that uh, my, I'd lost the use of my left hand, so I knew I had a brain tumor. And that, but we, the doctors had told me that it didn't really start there. It had to start somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so I get the co phone call. I'm at the conference. I walk outside with uh, a very dear friend of mine who was there to hold my hand to find out what this was all about. And, uh, the doctor said, I, I hate to tell you, but you've got incurable, and they always seem to start with incurable. Yeah. You have incurable stage four lung cancer. I'm so sorry. And, and this particular doctor did not have a talent for hiding how serious it was. She was like, your life is over. Pretty much your life is over right now. And yeah. I'm sorry to tell you that because this is the worst news I could tell anyone. Right. And it's funny because I've, I've, you know, we publish books for playing medical professionals and uh, not many people like you, of course, but um, they're looking at their historical data and right. scans of, oh, my God, this is the worst I've seen. You're, you're Get your affairs in order. You've got, you know, months, not years here. And tell us about your reaction and what you went through for the next, you know, a few weeks or months on that, that news. Well, in that moment, I was numb. Uh, yeah, you know, of course trying to grasp um, that I, was, I had horrible cancer and, and the way she presented it, I was going to die. Yeah. And all I could think about was how is this going to impact my wife, Teresa? Right. What mm -hmm. is she going to do when I'm gone? Um, even at that moment, I had no fear of dying. I figured if I die, I die and then it's over. So for me, it was not a big deal. It was going to be a big deal for her and for my family. Uh -huh. But to me, death is is not something to be afraid of because it's going to happen. And yeah. um, and I'm not going to, you know, after I die, I won't be involved anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't I don't know if people are. Yeah, there. I think I'm going to, you know, we could discuss, discuss this, but I think the unknown is what gives every people even a small fear of like, if I go to you know Brazil, what's going to happen? There's a little bit of unknown there. Um, death is obviously a, a huge unknown. Um, that's why people have a lot of thoughts and ideas and you know religion and stuff about that. Um, 
and use like, okay, well, that's just, just something I'm going to go through. But I think the, the thing that's different from your perspective versus everybody else is we don't have a clue when it's going to happen. And most young people, especially, they think that so far in the future, it's inconsequential. Right. It's going to happen right. so far. I don't have to worry about it, think about it. I can eat what I want, drink what I want, do what I want. And it's so far in the future. It only is when you're like, you know, maybe in your late stage of life where you start thinking about, well, this is going to come up at yeah. some point. But even then still like, yeah, hey, I got five, 10, 20, 30 years. We don't know. So we live our days. But right. you were given a, a calendar saying percent chance of five years, 1%. Yep. You know, and did you think when you got that first news, did you have a, a number in your mind? Like, oh, I'll probably make it a year or two. Or what were you thinking in terms of? How much time I, you have. I thought about it a lot and I thought, what is the best way for me to handle this? Yeah. And I came up with a philosophy that every day that I wake up, I tell myself I have three years to live. Yeah. No more, no less. I have three years to live. And I picked three years because um, I thought if I said I had one year to live, then there would be such an urgency and I'd, you know, I don't know what I would do, but I would, it would be about making a lot of stuff happen in a hurry. Yeah. And if I had five years or 10 years to live, then what's the urgency? You know, yeah. I, nothing, but three years, I want to make sure every moment is spectacular. Yeah. I, I, my wife and I love travel. So I wanted to make sure we traveled and saw the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was very important to me. I spent my entire life trying to make a difference with other people. Uh, my mission in life was to help others achieve the greatness within them. And I just felt like everyone needs a guide that will help them fulfill their life. And mm -hmm. so I thought, well, three years, I can make an impact on people, people who are going through cancer, people who are going through other illnesses, and sure. more importantly, the family members. I can yeah. give them a perspective because most people aren't as open about their situation as I am yeah. and don't share the pain and, and, and the, um, the emotional toil. Mm -hmm. And so I share it and it allows family members of people going through any kind of serious illness. It allows them to, um, to understand more about what their family member is going through. And for yeah. me, that is so important that I can use this time I have to make yeah. that impact. You know, you say the words, um, I, I'm in you know, service of others. I want to help other people out. A lot of people say that, Les. A lot mm -hmm. of people say that. Um, I can tell you based on my interactions with you and our friendship in the past couple of years that you don't just, those are not just words to you. You actually live that on a daily basis. I mean, hell. You're, you're doing, going through this, going through this very personal journey of the, you know, the end is near and all you're focusing on is other people. I, I'm, and we can go through the list of it, but being a, a vistage chair for multiple things. I mean, you're, give me a little bit about what you've done that, that and it's hard sometimes to talk about yourself, but tell me about what you've done to, to embody that service and others thing. Well, so I, for 20 years, I ran companies mm -hmm. and my focus in running my companies was on the people. I figured if I created an environment where uh, all my people were excellent and they excelled and they, they saw their life as yeah. uh, being better because they were working with me, that would be better for the business. Right. And I had great success in my business. Uh -huh. And then 20 years ago, I, I semi-retired and became a Vista chair where I mentor other CEOs. Mm -hmm. And again, that was about helping them become better leaders right. so that they could get, you know, have a better life uh -huh. and get better results. And yeah. I was really focused on the human being, not the business in my, in Vistage, many chairs are focused on the business. Sure. I really didn't care about the business. I cared about the yeah. human being. And I felt that if I cared about the human being that I was working with, that would result in great business in after 20 you know, years, it sure proved to be the fact. Yeah. But, um, the person who introduced, introduced us, Miriam Malik, um, who runs a couple of a couple of organizations in Vistage, um, told me that, you know, hey, we do these, you know, CEO roundtables. You spend an afternoon with them talking about stuff. So what do you talk about during your one-on-ones? 
And she said, 100% of the time has nothing to do with business. <laughs> That's always the personal stuff, the attitude, mindset, well, whatever you want to call it. I oh, guess that's true for you, right? Yeah. But let me share a story. Uh, Please do. Yeah. Love um, stories. So was it five, six weeks ago, maybe eight weeks ago now, mm -hmm. I was given the devastating news yeah. that my chemo no longer works. After 93 sessions, it no longer 93 works. chemo sessions. With that yes. head of hair, you were just kicking that chemo in the ass. Wow. Well, what's, well I don't know, because... That means 93 weeks I was very sick because chemo made me sick for a week. So I was always sick one week out of three. Yeah. But that gave me two good weeks. But anyway, the doctor said, it's not working because your liver now is covered with cancer. You've got over 15 tumors in your liver. And he said, but the good news is maybe we can do a biopsy on your liver Mm -hmm. Look at those tumors and maybe we can find some targeted therapy for you. Right. So I went in for my biopsy and they kind of put me in the crazy hazy days of, you know, put me under. Um, got their, They got their sample. But because they were messing with my liver, I had to sit in the uh, recovery room for two hours, even though I was completely focused. Mm -hmm. And there were two nurses in the recovery room and one was working with me and one was working with someone else. And me being me, I asked, I did nothing but ask questions of the nurse that was with me and focused on her and tried to find out what was going on with her. And then she had to leave and the other nurse was asked to take over and okay. she'd been listening. So she walked over, yeah. grabbed my hand and said, can I ask you questions about my life? Can you, I really want to understand how you can be the way you are going through this because my family's going through severe uh, issues. Hmm. My sisters are not helping my mother. And there was a lot going on. And what happened is for the next hour, she sat with me holding my hand. She never let go of my hand. And I asked her questions about her life. And I, let her express her fears and her hopes. Mm -hmm. And it became, while I'm in the recovery room for this biopsy, it became an opportunity for her to really get in touch with her emotions and her feelings around her family and her mother. And to me, that was the most, that was the best recovery I could ever have. And Flora was her name. Mm -hmm. And she felt like, that was, she was so grateful that mm -hmm. I spent that hour with her. I had nowhere yeah. else to go. But <laughs> <laughs> captive audience. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But we spent that hour and that made a difference for Flora. And I was, you know, to me, that was the best use of my time. Wow. You know, working on your book, which, um, you know, you copy there, you can hold it up or I can get mine if you want. There we go. There we go. That's the book, folks. Um, he wrote this book about his, uh, okay, you can set it down now. <clears throat> um, and it was really a, a series of his, his thoughts and feelings and musings. Um, he blogged a lot about it, but we put this book together and I was so taken with some of the conversations we had regarding the big questions of life and death and perspective and whatnot. And you know, you already said, hey, you know, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. So, you know, I'm not worried about that because I think you said it pretty well. You said you, you didn't know what it was like before you were born. And so it's the same thing when you die. You don't know anything because you're not, you're not existent. So it's okay, right. whatever. Right. But people, when they hear a friend or family member is dying of cancer, they say some things which are like, you know, you, you'd roll your eyes, but like, oh my God, would you... <laughs> They say things that they know they mean well, but it comes out horribly wrong. Right. So let's take a few minutes and say, talk about those things that people um, say to you that, you know, not, this is not to your friends, but to the general population that right. you might want to like rephrase it. You want to cover some of those things that, to yeah. not say? Well, one thing is, you know, uh, we're all going to die. Yeah. And that's one of the first comments. We're all going to die. And, you know, it's, it's like it, it, well, yes, that's true. And I yeah. want everyone to understand that and to believe that. Right. We're all going to die. But 
what that does for me is it's like it's diminishing my situation in a huge way yeah in a huge way and you know i didn't i don't take it that way and i don't yeah. let it bother me but it and it does diminish the person you're talking to and if a different person might react to it differently right right um cuz while we're all going to die i've been told mine's going to be in the next 6 months and every day That's five and a half years yeah <laughs> But in every day, the doctors look at me like, you're a miracle. The, the mm -hmm. fact that you're here. Yeah. I just had a doctor when um, I was in the hospital because of pneumonitis about, what was that, about uh, three months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, the pulmonologist who was working with me, he was like, you know what, we're going to give you this and we're going to give you that. Because frankly, everything about you shouldn't be. And so, you know, so... I'm going to try things I haven't tried on anyone because, frankly, you shouldn't be here. Yeah. And, and that's the words they use with me. So, yes, I'm going to die, and I could die in the next two months. In fact, my expectation based on this new liver, uh, yeah. the, these tumors shown in my liver, is that I'm going to be gone in six to, to ten months. Yeah. Um, so it's there, and it's on the doorstep. Mm-hmm. But um, so that's one. They go right. That yeah. People say we're all, all going to die. die. Shut up! You're yeah. stop, stop whining. Like you ever whine, yeah. right? Come on, yeah. And people say, like you always say, "Hey, you still got your hair. It can't be that bad." You don't say it can't be that bad. <laughs> but people always say, "Well, you still got your hair. Ninety-three chemo treatments. You still got your hair." I'm just you know. <laughs> and, and the bottom line is, as if the hair really matters. Yeah, and it's not going to be there probably next week. Yeah, well, now that I've got this, so things all change treatment? today. All right, things that's all changed change today. today. Okay, good. So, so the the treatment yeah. they were going to put me on, right. yes, it was ninety nine percent guaranteed I was going to lose my hair, but right. they found this new thing, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, sure, it's fine. So, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, because um, you look and sound so healthy when you're yes. not in the chemo the chemo um, down down slope there, that people are like, wow, you don't look sick. You got your hair. Oh, you're you know. Try, exactly. They're trying to encourage you, but it's, again, diminishing. It, it's diminishing. And, and yeah. you know, even when I'm really sick, I make sure, I mean, I don't, I still go out and speak to groups, even though yeah. I'm, you know, I feel like I'm, I've got the worst flu in the world. Cause after, yeah. for a week after every chemo, that's what it feels like. Yeah. I'm exhausted. My head's all foggy. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not as sharp. But yeah. I still go out in public and I still speak, mm -hmm. you know, because that's who I am. And yeah. it's not like I'm going to sit there and say, woe is me. It's like, okay, I'm going to get out and keep living my life. My commitment right. is to live every day I have left to the best I can. Right. Yeah. And so letting something like being sick get in the way, this is not going to happen. You know, I've flown to Europe the day after chemo or flown to the Japan the day after chemo. Yeah. I've been on that plane miserable as can be. But I know a day or two after landing, I'm going to yeah. be in that country enjoying everything that country has to offer and experiencing it with my wife. Mm -hmm. And that makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. Yes. So, Another phrase you told me, which I'm sure I've used before, and I won't do it again since talking to you, is like, what can I do? Yeah, what can I do? What can I, you know, tell and, people and, why that's why that's also a bad thing to say. It's it's first off, it's wonderful of you to want to do whatever you can do. Yeah, right. But what has happened in that moment with those words mm -hmm. is you have now put the burden on me yeah. to come up with something for you to do. So no matter what I'm going through, what I'm thinking about, now I'm in a mindset, I got two things I can do. It's oh nothing, don't worry about it. Yeah. Or I have to go, okay, I know, I know Doug, I know what his, his capabilities are. I know, you yeah. know what he has to offer. What can he do for me? Let me figure out, let me do this. Let me do this for Doug. Let me, yeah. let me do the work for you. Yes. Let me do this for Doug. So for me, it's a lot better if someone says, I'm going to the market. Yeah. Um, you know, are there things that I can, I can I pick up something for you yeah. at the market or something? Or even if you come into my house, come into my refrigerator and rate it and say, look, I can see you're short on this, this, and this, and this. I'm yeah. going to the market. I'm going to bring it back. And I would rather people do than ask. Right. 
So whatever you think I need, call me up and say, hey, I just, you know, I'm going to order dinner for you tomorrow night. Yeah. So you know, things, little things like that right. are huge. And yeah. I don't think I need it, but I know I've got to eat dinner tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so instead of asking what you can do to help, it's just do something. Do something that you think you would want. Yeah. And that really makes a difference. If you do like something that. you think you would want. Yeah. Yeah. Please. If you want to go do something, go cure cancer and give it back. To there you go. Yeah. You if you can do that, you know, I mean, one wow. thing I, I always tell people is um, share my book with someone. If you want to yeah. do something for me, uh, you know, or people, especially people who so many people told me they've read the book and it really had a profound impact. Yeah. And I say, well, then share it with someone. Mm -hmm. Just You don't have to buy another book. Give them your copy. Yeah. Just share it with someone. Share mm -hmm. my message with someone. And that would be so meaningful. And let's let's talk about that for a minute. Um, you title it Cancer's Gifts, which I love because it's like a negative and a positive in one, one short sentence. Yes. Um, can you discuss a little bit about the gifts? And don't give away the whole book, but talk about a couple of those so people understand your perspective and mindset on this well first and foremost it's the fact that it's it's allowed Teresa and me my wife to mm -hmm. have amazing conversations yeah and it's allowed us to have conversations with a lot of people in our life because none of every one of us knows somebody who's going through some yeah. kind of major illness particularly cancer and it's opened up so many conversations mm -hmm. and really brought a closeness for us and our friends that we were already close, but it just be we became closer. So that's one mm -hmm. of the gifts. Um, the three years to live philosophy has yeah. just opened our eyes to opportunity that we um, might have missed, might have just passed by. You know, we might have been invited to something or saw an opportunity and said, we can do that later. Yeah. Three years to live. We do it now. Um, another thing, perfect moments. Uh, yes, I like that one. Mm -hmm. All of us, you know, we, we can all identify some perfect moments in our lives. Maybe the birth of a child or wedding day, things like that. Uh -huh. I identify and embrace perfect moments every day my conversation with flora was a perfect moment uh -huh. um the um it might be a moment at the gym where i have a conversation with someone else at the gym and that to me mm -hmm. becomes a perfect moment i find that if i'm open and generous with what i call perfect moments i have perfect moments every single day yeah. And by embracing those, oh my gosh, the 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 joy and the, um, the 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 fact that my day becomes so much more special because of a perfect moment or multiple perfect moments, and they happen all the time. As long as I say yeah. to myself, "Right, wow, that was a perfect moment." I'm I'm gonna just put this out there. I think it's true. I have only scientific evidence of it. I got a, a few. Actually, it's just my, my glucose is low. Okay, well, go get a cookie. Yeah, you know what? I will be right back in a second. Yeah, we'll be right here. That's okay. Well, I'll just I'll just yap while we're doing that. I'll get the book. Um, folks, this this man is um his attitude and his mindset is mind blowing. I mean, to have brain, lung, and now liver cancer, and here he is just going through his day, having a good time, helping others through their challenges while he's going through what I cannot even imagine having all these, uh, all these things in your body and knowing that's, you know, the end is, is near. Um, just pay attention to what he says and how he says it, because my gosh, um, you know, I put on my, my own Facebook profile is live every day as though, as though it's your last, because someday you'll be right. Um, and this, this guy actually, actually lives it. So I'm, I'm talking, I'm monologuing here, I'm monologuing. <laughs> A um, little cranberry juice. They give me a little spike. Yeah, you never know. You, you know, don't worry about the UTI when you got cancer. Realize it's okay. That's right. That should do it. Yeah. And um, I'll have so, crackers. Yeah, go ahead. Please do. Um, I had a train of thought. Let me see where it went. Boop, boop, boop. See, the only one getting foggy. 
Um, I'm sure you were talking okay. about how wonderful I am. Yeah, of course. The, <laughs> okay, I know what it is. The, um, the body cannot live without the mind, so we're, we're connected here, right? Mm -hmm. And we've talked to other people who've gone through diseases like yours, and they've got this death sentence, defeatist attitude. Doctor says you got six months and, you know, gone in six months. You said, no, I'm going to shoot for three years, a rolling three years, of course. So I get that. Mm -hmm. That's the good thing about it. And your attitude about living has been magnified with this diagnosis. But you got to believe that your attitude has something to do with your extension of your life. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I can joke about dying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, because, see, acceptance is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that I've accepted that I've got lung cancer, now I've got liver cancer, I've had brain, I have a brain tumor, um, I've accepted that all of these things are now part of my life. Yeah, It's part of, of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I've accepted that I'm going to die from cancer. Right. I don't know when, but I'm going to die from cancer. And so... That's off the table of, of worries. I don't worry about it because yeah. it's going to happen. So I can't change it. There's nothing I can do to change it. So, right. you know, a lot of people, they look at their past and they think to themselves, gosh, I wish I hadn't done that. I, wow, right. look at the mistakes I've made. And all that is is hoping for a better past. Yeah. I can't change my past. Yeah, right. And the same thing as the future. I, I look mm -hmm. at the future and I say, gosh, if I didn't have cancer, I could do this or I could do that. Or or I can't plan for my my kid's birthday or wedding because yeah. I have cancer. And I'm like, no, live every day. It's all about today uh -huh. and living today, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, make plans to, to live a good life with what you can do, mm -hmm. but man, no lamenting what's not going to happen. Right. And so I right. don't worry about what's not going to happen. I worry about what I can make happen. Mm -hmm. And that's the life I'm living. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, you've talked to other people though, in your, in your travels the past five years who don't have that attitude. No. And I, I mean, there's, a, there's a two different scenarios, right? There's the ones that hope, um, without the reality check and those that are accepting without living, right? They're, they're ready to die. So they just get their affairs in order and they wait for the body to, to collapse. Right. You've got this, I guess, middle way. Whereas, yeah, I'm accepting things, but I'm not negative about it. I'm still like, Hey, I'm going to mm -hmm. live tomorrow today, you know, as I got today. Right. So there's that. Exactly. I, I believe in my heart that there's this, you know, chemical endorphins going through your body with that attitude that is, I won't use the word fighting cancer, but helping you, you know, live through it. Mm -hmm. A big part of that. I, I yeah. focus on what's possible. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's still more glucose, me. more crackers. No, I'm doing, I'm doing my, what I need to do. I just, there's right. no way to turn it off. It's still going to scream at me every time it goes low. That's okay. So I yeah. said no. <laughs> <laughs> um, this whole diabetes thing is a new thing that came from the drug. Oh my gosh, right? We got that, diabetes, liver, lung, heart, lung. Oh my God, yeah. Well, that, that's a whole new thing because of this drug I'm on called yeah. um, prednisone, which is to fix the pneumonitis, which is yeah. a product of the chemo that's caused my my lungs to get all inflamed. Right. But it's all, but again, even that, I look at this and say, well, okay, that's the, what I can do is live. Yep. Now with diabetes, I can now be injecting myself with insulin. Um, right. I don't worry about, damn, I wish that didn't happen because yeah. it happened. And yeah. so I focus on what's possible. I, I, I'm a marathon. I was a marathon runner. Yeah. Now I can walk five miles. Mm -hmm. It's what I can do. So we go and walk five miles. Mm -hmm. right. When the pneumonitis was real bad, I couldn't walk a hundred steps. Yeah, but I got out and I walked as with uh, poles and everything. I went out and I walked a hundred steps, completely mm -hmm. out of breath. That was all I can do because I do what I can do, yeah. and I don't 
feel sorry for myself that I can't do it. I just focus on what's possible. Mm -hmm. And that seems, and that's, I wish more people would do that, not worry about what they've lost, but, mm -hmm. but really embrace what they have. Well, yeah. What do you do with the cards you're dealt? Right. Right. That's, that's it. Yeah. And when we spoke last week, it was, I got this liver cancer now, brain cancer, lung cancer. Now it's in my liver and you were anticipating targeted therapy. And they told you last week, I'm sorry, you can't do the targeted stuff. You got to do the general deep, nasty, accelerated chemo, which would lose your hair in 48 hours and maybe extend your life a few months, but it was, it was going to be nasty. And you got news yesterday or today about this? You got news this morning. Um, morning? Let's hear about it. Actually, actually last, last night it was the, the yeah. doctor called and said, you know, he didn't want me to go on this, this chemo that is really has low effectiveness and, and yeah. it would definitely 99% chance I would lose my hair and yeah. I was going to be real sick and there was really no guarantees that it would work. Right. But, and that would be, you know, and my wife and I had discussed it and said, you know, we'll try it for a couple of sessions. And if it's so bad, then we're just going to forget about it. And we're just going to yeah. live as well as we can for as long as we can. Yeah. And then he, he said he had read an article about a breast cancer treatment uh, that was targeted that all of us. You sudden, have man boobs. I've, I've no, seen you. No, no, you have man boobs. You're in good shape. Nope. nope. Um, that uh, they've been trying on different types of cancer mm -hmm. and they did some um, testing of it, uh, um, clinical tests about five years ago and it seemed to have some efficacy with lung cancer. Hmm. And it's a targeted, so you ha I had to have the right um, genomes, the right proteins okay. in, my, in my cancer to make it work. This mm. had been approved for lung cancer, this drug, a year ago in the European Union. Okay. And in May of this year, it was approved. So two months ago, it was approved for, um, wow. for lung cancer treatment. And they, we found out yesterday, he, he had sent this off, didn't tell me he was going to do it. Yeah. And it came back and he said, well, I'm, I'm a candidate for it. Nice. And so we start the treatment Monday. Um, okay. It's got about a 50% chance of working. And when it does work, the median time frame it works is 17 months. So, you know, it's not buying me 20 more years. We don't know what it does. One percent, one percent of the time. In other words, one person, <laughs> uh, it cured him. <laughs> uh -huh. So will that also go after the the cancer and the liver and the brain, or just lung? It goes after all of it. It's Ooh. because it's the it's the cancer that is yeah cancer. yeah, and okay. it's the same cancer. It's just the it lung can. Even though I have cancer in my liver, it's considered lung cancer. Okay. Because it's the it is a lung cancer that now has decided to infest my liver. It's, taking a little, it's, it's traveling thing, like you were traveling, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing as lung cancer in my brain and in, in okay. my lymph nodes. You know, it's in my lymph nodes too. Oh, so this will, um, but you know, if it works, it'll you know it'll buy me couple, whatever. I'll be back to my three years to live, and because I was really focusing on yeah. being gone by by the end of this year. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was and uh, I really expected that was going to be the end of my life, the end of this year. Right. So now I've been given a bit of a reprieve. Maybe we don't know if it's going to we'll work. See, yeah. when will they know if that actually if it's actually working? Probably six weeks, okay. eight weeks when I do whenever I do my next scan. OK, you know, we and you a, um, you obviously be blogging about that on Caring Bridge. I know because yes. you're a big blogger on Caring Bridge. Yes. I, um, and for those folks who uh, want to check that out, um, it's, it's caringbridge.org. Is that right? Caringbridge.org and just look for Les Whitney. And yep. I've been blogging for five and a half years. And yep. I update, you know, at first when I was started this, I was updating every two or three days yep. as I was learning more and going through it. Now it's been every two or three weeks. Yeah. You know, usually yeah. it's either whatever some event, it might be a, a chemo mm -hmm. treatment. It might be a, a mental epiphany that I had yeah. and I want to share yeah. but so it's about every two or three weeks that I update yeah. and yeah. if you're on there you can get an email that says less updated yep it's it's a it's a wonderful blog um I'll just talk about it for a moment because you wrote it and I want to comment on it but 
Les is very clinical about what happens and what's happening in his life. He, um, he says what's going on and positive or negative, it's the same amount of energy he puts towards that. And my gosh, that's, that's the inspirational part for a lot of people because I keep thinking of other people who go through this and they get emotional about it. They go, you know, irrational hope or irrational acceptance of, you know, of death versus your, I don't know how to phrase it, but I use the word realist, uh, reality based, op, 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 reality based optimism is how I describe you. It's like, yeah, he's accepting it. it's going to take him out and he's living life fully in despite of it. So that's, yeah. I mean, I just, I'm matter of fact, but I, I do yeah. share my thoughts and my emotions around yeah. it. Right. You know, I, 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 you know, and I like, you know, the couple of posts ago, I said, you know, Teresa and I cried this morning. Yep. And it was because we had, you know, found out that it looked like we were going to, I was going to be in yep. the last six or eight months of my life. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It, it, I, I try to present it just in a way that everyone can relate. And I don't write this. I think the people who get the most value are people who are healthy because it really gives them a perspective oh, on life that, you know, if this guy can go through this and have this perspective, what am I complaining about? What Absolutely. I, yeah. Whenever I have a down moment or a down day, I, I will definitely think about you. And I have a couple of times actually. I'm like, oh boy. You know, it's it, your life is pretty good because you say your life is pretty good. So I'm like, my well, life is it's, best it's five, great. Last five years have been the best five years of my life. Yeah, right. So, you know, it, in so many ways, just mm -hmm. every time I turn around, I, there's something to be grateful for. Right. So. You talk about those perfect moments, um, and uh, you know, with this talking with Laura, that one nurse was was one of them. Give me another one. I know you got many. <laughs> I am. Um, so I'm going to give you one that most people wouldn't say is a perfect moment, because uh, to me, a lot of perfect moments result in, in memories, too. Okay. And so, uh, Teresa and I were playing golf, and all all this chemo and everything, my balance is really awful. Yeah. And I hit a, sh a shot into the lake at our at our golf course. And I went over, I was going to fish it, fish out the ball and my balance went south. And the next thing I knew I was in the middle of the lake, <laughs> so completely drenched in the middle of the lake. And I got out, you know, with a lot of help because I was all cut up and everything. Oh. And, you know, I, I'm there and I'm getting ready to hit the shot on the next hole. And I turned to Teresa and I said, that was a perfect moment because we're going to talk about that forever. Yeah. And so, you know, even that can be a perfect moment. There's uh, an old saying, uh, tragedy plus time equals humor. There you go. Yeah. So, I like that. You know, a tragic for a moment, but then it's a great story for later. You know, I've, it's, it's, it's very true. Um, we're going to wrap up in the next five minutes or less. I want to hear about um, being a Visage chair. You're serving all these other CEOs and their companies. But when you were diagnosed and uh, Vistage, which is a worldwide organization of a CEO peer group, for those who don't know it, they actually made an award, not just for you, but about you. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Well, uh, Vistage had, uh, has identified, Vistage is what, 70 years old now. Mm -hmm. And um, three chairs, we were called chairs. Three yeah. chairs have had awards named after them that everyone strove to get their, this award, an award. Mm -hmm. And about four years ago or three years ago, they said, they called me up and asked if I'd come in and they wanted to let me know that they've now created a fourth award and it's wow. the Les Whitney award for perseverance. And it was for a lot of things I did during my 20 years working with the organization mm -hmm. and for my trap, my uh, life with cancer. And how the impact I've had on Vistage members, on the Vistage community, and then on the world in general by sharing my story yeah. and by living a great life for the yeah. rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so, so this award is handed out every year in January to a deserving uh, member of the community, the, chair, the Vistage community. And sure uh, I've been fortunate that I've been able to uh, 
be there and hand out the award the last few years. And I was thinking I wouldn't get to do it this year, but maybe I will now with this new drug. Who knows? Hey, I can't wait to get the update in about six and a half weeks or so. Let me know the yep. thumbs yep. up or down or sideways. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be a... Uh... You gonna sleep the night before that? I mean, how do you, how do you even? I deal you know what? I, it doesn't. You know, I don't even think about it. Right I there, just, you go. I just go to sleep. You know, because it's that's something in the future, and I can't do anything about it, so I don't think yeah. about it. Right. You know, whatever will be, will be. I'm gonna be Doris Day. Que sera sera. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, unless you lose your hair, then you, you know. I'm coming kind of back to the hair thing. It's just impressive. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah, your que sera sera guy. I like that. Um. What other kind of words of wisdom would you like to uh, share with the audience today? And then we'll wrap this up. You know, if I would, there's a few things. I mean, first and foremost is that we all have to embrace the people we love yeah. and really hold on tight to, to those relationships. And, and, and please don't hide if you've got issues, don't hide it from them. Right. The fact Teresa and I are in this together. This is mm -hmm. our journey. I don't, it's our cancer. I, I've never felt like I was alone. And the worst oh. thing I could do was try to keep it from her. So, that, because right. it makes it harder on her, not easier. Uh -huh. So I think that's one thing. And I do that with everyone in my community. And that's why I have mm -hmm. the blog because mm -hmm. it's easier for them. Yeah. If I keep them informed and keep them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's one thing in, I would say focus on today. Live each day like it's your like it's your last. Yeah. And and enjoy it and don't let any negative energy get in the way. Yeah. You no, know, just make it happen and don't put off to tomorrow your dreams. Right. You know, I uh I'm if I want to do something I do it. You know, mm -hmm. we're living live it living today for today. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things I wish everyone would just focus on. Live your, live a great life for the yeah. rest of your life. And However that only can is, happen a day at a time. Yeah. That's right. So, and again, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Always chatting with you, Les. Uh, folks, um, his book is beyond inspirational. It can, it can, you know, we all say it will change your life. It can. It certainly extended his life and it can change yours. It's a best-selling book, Cancer's Gift. A loving journey towards the final chapter, and we uh, we hope and pray that the the final chapter gets keep moving on that rolling three years, push another three years on that sucker. And um, man, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Um, check his book out on Amazon. There's a link right here on the screen. You can see it. I put a special link for the book on Amazon that says Doug Crow dot site less. It'll take you right to Amazon to get his book. So check that out, and I'll put it up there again for a few seconds here. Uh, no time limit on it. Whatever is up there. All right, Les. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Doug. And, I appreciate uh, you too, my friend. We'll we'll chat again soon, and definitely, if not if not six weeks, probably sooner. All right, buddy. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank bye bye. You. Bye bye.